today, why Australia's housing crisis is about to get worse, a whole lot worse. I'm going to dive into the data so that you can make an informed decision about whether you should buy property as soon as you can, or should you wait in the hope that something is going to happen that could give you the opportunity to grab a bargain. Let's dive in. Hello, it's Nero here, founder of the Investment Rise Buyers Agency. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button because I talk about all things related to the property market and the economy. Housing loan values rise as affordability hits 30 year low, REIA reports. Now you must immediately be wondering with that headline, how can home loans be rising if affordability is falling? That's exactly what we're about to investigate further. REIA President Leanne Pilkington said the latest Australian Bureau of Statistics ABS figures shows the total value of new housing loans increased by 3.9% in July to $30.6 billion. Key findings from the ABS data include the value of new investor loans rose 5.4% to $11.7 billion, 35.4% higher than July of 2023. Owner-occupier loans increased 2.9% to $18.9 billion, 21.4% higher than the previous year. New owner-occupier first home buyer loans rose 0.8%, 19.7% higher than July 2023. So based on that data, it's very clear that every segment of the property market is increasing in terms of demand. There's more demand from first home buyers, there's more demand from investors, and there's more demand from people upgrading their homes. So why? Why are so many people jumping into the market anywhere from 20 to 35% more than 12 months ago? This is even more curious when you realize that a recent study found that Sydney housing is unaffordable on the median income until at least the 2030s. So despite affordability being at all time lows, we know that demand for property is increasing because if more people are taking out loans, getting pre-approved for loans, that indicates that they're either entering or planning to enter the property market very, very soon. So we are seeing demand start to increase. But what about supply? All levers must be pulled to fast track housing. There were just 163,320 building approvals for new housing in the 2023-24 financial year. The weakest financial year in over a decade, stated HIA senior economist Tom Devitt. So we're building fewer properties than we have at any point in the last 10 years. And yet, as I'll share with you in just a moment, our population continues to grow faster than it ever has. New industry forecasts show Australia is moving further away from meeting its National Housing Accord target of 1.2 million new homes, according to Master Builders Australia. The latest projections indicate Australia will fall short of the five-year target by over 166,000 homes, an increase from the 112,000 shortfall predicted five months ago. So the shortfall now is expected to be over 10%. And remember, 1.2 million homes over five years was never going to be enough anyway, and now we're falling short of that. So that's new builds. What about properties for sale or listings? Are there enough properties on the market for the number of people who want to buy them? Have a look at this next chart. Here we have data from Matusik looking at dwelling sales. That's the demand side of things. People looking to buy versus stock for resale, the number of properties available on the market. You can see there's a huge disparity. We have the blue line here showing 640,000 dwelling sales versus 165,000 dwellings listed for sale. The red line, there's a huge disparity Demand is so much higher than supply. And then when you look at this next chart, which looks at the supply in terms of months, we only have three point months worth of supply on the market. That's horrendously low and it's falling as you can see on this chart. Then we have not enough properties being built as I shared with you earlier on, plus so much demand about to enter the market. 
But let's break this down a bit more because everything I'm talking about is on a nationwide macro level. Let's bring it down to our capital cities and have a look at what the supply and demand ratios are there. So here we have data from CoreLogic looking at the sales, which is again the demand to the new listings ratio or supply for the 12 months to May 2024. Now what we're looking for here is, is a ratio of one. So if the ratio is one, then demand is equal to supply. If the ratio is above one, then demand is higher than supply. And if the ratio is below one, then it means that we're actually in an oversupplied market. And when you look at this data, looking at our major capital cities, we can see that Melbourne at 0.9 and Hobart at 0.9 are the only two markets right now that are oversupplied according to CoreLogic. Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth are all undersupplied. So if you were to just apply that basic economic philosophy that property prices are likely to rise where demand is higher than supply, it would give you a very good high level indication of which areas to avoid and which areas to look at. Now, there's two more things to consider. We know that inflation is falling in Australia. So interest rates are likely to fall. The only question is when. Some banks think it could be as soon as December, others seem to think February. Either way, interest rates are likely to fall. Now, this will then increase people's borrowing capacities. Now, there's something people are getting wrong about this though. A lot of people are saying, look, a 0.25% drop in interest rates won't make a huge difference. You've got to wait until interest rates drop by 0.5% or 0.75% before it makes a tangible difference to people's borrowing capacities. And only at that time will then property prices really start to rise because there'll be so much more demand on the market. Here's why that's wrong. There are a lot of people right now who are looking to buy property but are very nervous. They still don't know which way interest rates are going to go. And the moment interest rates fall by 0.25%, that will be the indicator to them that, okay, the uncertainty around interest rates is over. Now is a great time for them to buy. And they will jump in anyway, which will improve confidence in the property market. And you will start to see property prices take off even more. So with the massive supply shortages we have right now in Australia, coupled with the fact that so many people are now looking to get into the market, and then when interest rates fall, more people will jump into the market, and yet our supply continues to fall lower and lower, the housing crisis in Australia is going to get worse, and many people will be left behind. Many people who can afford property right now, but choose not to buy, will look back with regret, wishing they had bought. But there's another thing to consider. Just because we have supply shortages across the country does not mean you can buy anywhere. Even if you look at cities where on a macro level there are supply shortages, individual suburbs and individual council areas will perform very, very differently. Why? Well, as I shared with you earlier on, we know the federal government is going to fail in its target to reach 1.2 million homes. And this is because pretty much every state will also fail in its target in terms of helping achieve that nationwide goal. However, there will be certain areas where they increase supply to such an extent that those areas end up being oversupplied. And those are areas where property prices are unlikely to grow anywhere near as much as in other areas, and they may even fall. Attempts to resolve Sydney's dire shortage of housing have produced city pockets where there is now an oversupply of homes with up to one in seven of all the properties in some areas currently up for sale. Figures from suburb data showed the bulk of the oversupplied markets were in Sydney's fringes and in higher density zones in middle ring suburbs, especially in the northwest and west. Parts of Sydney's inner south were also reported to have a glut of properties up for sale and could become oversupplied. So what does this all mean? It means that property prices on a nationwide level are likely to keep rising and that the rate of increase will accelerate from next year when interest rates do start 
to fall. That's why I think for many people who can afford to buy an investment property, the sooner you buy, the better off you will be and the less regret you will have because you missed out. However, that does not mean you can buy blindly. Even in cities, even in markets where there is an overall undersupply, certain pockets are oversupplied. So therefore capital growth will be compromised in those pockets while others will do really, really well. So due diligence will become extremely important. And look, if you want assistance with that, check out the link in the description below to get totally for free the audio version and digital version of my book. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.